All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I see you out there. You can come up if you can't see the screen. We're going to have a few things going on here. Um, I'm Hanjun Jung, so I'm a senior manager here at Samsung Electronics. And I am here be today because, really, I help innovators innovate. And so I'm hoping that you get a lot of, out of this session today. Um, and then we also have. I'm Matt Hills. Uh, I am a senior field engineer with uh, Samsung. And I work with uh, innovators like Samsung, or with like Hung Jun. And I make those innovations uh, a reality at scale in, in the financial services vertical. Yeah, so thanks for coming to our session. This is the developer's insight for transforming business with, with Samsung DeX. And there's, there will be a theme here that I want you to carry throughout the presentation. And, and the goal here is to really start thinking about how you can apply more than just a desktop experience to solving some of your, your solutions, customer needs, and that sort of thing. So, uh, so let's get started. So I wanted to sort of give a little bit of a history lesson as to how we came about Samsung DeX. And it, re it really comes back over to when computers and were first were developed, right? So they were vacuum tubes. Or take, they probably took up the size of this whole room just for, for a single sort of use. Uh, there's probably more processing power right now than, than when you know, the, the guys first landed on the moon, right? Like in the palm of your hand. And so, so the, that was the one thing. And there was like a lot of this client server. Everything was all done, processed low, remotely over in a data center somewhere. And you had thin clients sort of interacting with, with those systems. And so what they tried to do is they tried to trim that all the way down into a local compute. So that's where desktops came, came in about. And while we got to desktops, people were like, well, that's great, but let's make it portable. And the first portable computer was 24 pounds. So I don't know how portable that was, but it's 24 pounds. Mm -hmm. Pretty heavy. But, it, but within 10 years, they, they trimmed that weight all the way down to 12 pounds. And then 10 years after that, well, look at what we have today. We have laptops that are like maybe less than a pound. You have cell phones that are pretty much eclipsing the processing power of laptops. And so that gave you the compute power. Now you got to look at, OK, well, we have all these laptops. We have all these desktops. Now we're roughly in the 2000s, so the internet's around. Everyone's got a website. And so necessity is the mother of all inventions, right? <clears throat> so when you look at it, there's lots of these companies are out there that were having capacity issues because they would ramp up. So think of, think of Black Friday and, and uh, you know, around Thanksgiving, right? And everyone just rushes over to a website. And what happens? It just crashed. I mean, this was a common issue in the, in the early 2000s. And so virtualization technology needed to be invented or, you know, because what, what we're finding was when you created a data center and these pizza boxes were in the, in the shelf, you had to sort of estimate the total number of capacity that you might need within the demand that you're going to, to uh, you know, satisfy, right? And after that time, the majority of the time, these servers, they just sat idle, consuming power and electricity. So, Virtualization really solved that capacity and scale. And then you have mobile, mobile sort of networks that came about. So if you look at it, we, had, we went from 2G to 3G. So kilobits of information that could be passed over the wire, uh, over the air. And then that went into megabits. So what did that do? That opened up the door for phones, like the Galaxy line, to be able to really have a massive app explosion. So then you take the, the app explosion, right? So now you have apps and that sort of, that is mobile. You have unlimited capacity and storage. You have virtualization. And then you have sort of desktop compute. So what we're trying to do with Samsung DeX here is we're trying to really take the power of, of, of a Windows-like environment, okay? what, what you would use a physical keyboard and mouse for, to do and be more efficient at tasks at hand. Because at, at certain times, what, what end up happening is the plate of glass is great. It's convenient. 
but you spend an, a large amount of time swiping and scrolling. Okay, has, has anybody anybody like deal with spreadsheets on a, on a phone? I mean, do you like that experience? I mean, it's pretty bad, right? It's good for viewing the data, like in a pinch, but tr but try to edit something like that. It's it's virtually impossible. So what do you do? You fall back over to a laptop. Well. Why, why have to make that decision between a laptop and a desktop? Sorry, laptop and, and a mobile device, right? You don't want to have to make that decision. Why don't you just put it in the, put it in the palm of your hand, throw it in your pocket? Because the compute power is just, just as good there, right? So that's, that wraps sort of like how we're converging and why we, we created Samsung DeX, right? A little, little bit here about, about smartphones, right? Smartphone only users, right? The trend is, Everybody's going that way. When I first got my first computer, ooh, it's a Packard Bell, Costco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah Commodore Vic 20. <laughs> well, see, he, apparently gonna... he, he must be older than I was. Because <laughs> I didn't get a computer until about like college. But if you look at it, smartphone only users, on every age group, okay, the first time that someone gets, gets access over to a mobile device as a, as a child, it's roughly two to four years old. If you have kids, I, I have a two year old and a four year old. They're, they're already t interacting with tablets right now, be way before they're ever going to interact with, with a desktop or a laptop. So the trend is 1829, they're going to expect to do everything on their phones, right? Go to the app store, go download, go download an uh, application, because that's the first place you're going to go. You're not going to go to your desktop. And even in the, the, older, the older ranges of, of adults that are out there, they're still migrating. They're starting to migrate over there. But eventually, they'll, they'll have to make a decision. Do I spend $1,000 twice for a phone and a laptop? Or do I just, just spend $1,000 on one phone, right? So that's where we're at here. So keep that in mind, and, and we'll, we'll continue on here, right? So, so what is Samsung DeX? A Samsung DeX is a PC, Windows-like base environment for, for your phone. And, you pair it up with a, a mouse, keyboard, monitor, and you get that window experience that, that you really wanted from a phone or a tablet, but have the ability to, to have that on the go. So think about the ways that you can go into a hotel, um, you know, hook up with a wireless keyboard and mouse, and still be productive on the go, okay? It's more than just screen mirroring. It's based off of the Android multi-window framework, so there's nothing proprietary that we're doing. All we're doing is we're extending functionality that you get right off of the Android platform, okay? So the ability to be able to do two screens at once, you can be more productive, okay? It's really a, a powerhouse. Like, would, would, you, would you build a house with just a hammer? Of course not, right? You need, you need a lot of tools. So you get a tool belt, okay? But if, can I combine all those tools into a single smartphone or tablet? Think of, think of the ways that you can be innovative and use this solution outside of just using it as like a PC. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So let's get into part of our, our presentation today is about um, looking at digital bank transformations and how we use Samsung DeX to solve some of these challenges that they have. So. Everybody today is all about customer experience. So in the, re the retail industry right now, what they're battling is, can we fo get more individuals to come into a brick and mortar? Right? That's the number one thing that they're trying to attack right now. Because what do people do? Well, they use the internet. Everything's bought. A good portion of, of the things that you buy every day are typically sold through e-commerce. right? In the baking industry, they need to get accounts opened. Like that's their primary thing, right? That's how they make their money. Account openings and getting loans out to, to individuals. It's huge, okay? So we understand the banking insight and we wanna provide a better customer experience. You don't want to go into the traditional bank, wait in a line for like 30 minutes only to realize when you get to the teller they got to they get you to the back of the office because you actually wanted to open a loan and you didn't want to you know, pull out cash, right? So what we're, we're looking here is how do we 
improve that experience so that you as an individual want to come into the, to the bank branch, right? Rather, and, and really do that seamless, let me start my research online, let me think about the products that I'm interested in, and let me head down to the retail environment so that I can get the things done, but the experience in getting it done quickly, right? And very, very personalized. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit how, how we're gonna innovate there. So, so this is where uh, we, you know, we worked with our, our retail services team and financial services team to kind of come up with this concept of uh, a mobile first branch. Um, while it may be you know, finance focused, this really applies to any kind of brick and mortar. Right? So if you, if you look at the screen from uh, right to left, you know, you're gonna start with the customer journey into the brick and mortar. Right? So, so you have an opportunity there to use technology to, you know, to detect potentially when, when a customer or client comes into your location. Right? So that could be done to notify, you know, notify you that, that there's a client there. That could be done to customize content. You know, maybe they have your, your proprietary application on their mobile device. So you have the ability to kind of view into that and see uh, who's there and, and serve up the, the custom content. Um, and then, then you can look around and, um, you know, speaking about notification, you know, you could maybe get that notification on a wearable, right? So, so just giving you some different options when you're looking at, uh, you know, that brick and mortar, when you're looking at that introductory experience. Um, and then when you look at wearable, you can use those for other use cases. So um, if you wanted to communicate amongst your team on, on like in a retail floor, you can quickly and silently do that with wearable, right? Uh, you can use the wearable in other use cases potentially. So um, if you're thinking about, hey, I need to refund a transaction or do an override or get approval for a higher amount on something, you could potentially do that with a wearable, right? So, so those are all the challenges that we, we can try and solve today in finance, but also at any, again, any brick and mortar, right? So as we go through the, the branch, we look at potentially using VR. Uh, so, so one of the things we, we kind of want to do there is look at um, how can we uh, look at our, our younger clients? Where, you know, how can we help them visualize um, you know, the impacts in the decisions that they make? So maybe we can use VR to say, hey, if you, you know, contribute 2% to your 401k, you go through this virtual experience of, you know, my house is this size, you know, I have one car garage, you know, it's maybe an older model. Or, but if you do 10 or 15%, you know, your retirement and your, your, your life cycle could look something like this. So those are, again, different things we can use to do technology. Um, the use case we kind of focused on and that we, we've worked in the past is, is the, uh, the desktop, obviously, the, the, the desktop experience, uh, mobilizing our back office function, right? And our back office function uh, is, is, you know, we've all done that. You know, we've all gone into a location where you're, you're speaking to a representative, you want to get some more information, they're like, oh, let's go back into my office, you know, and they sit down at their desk, you're on the other side, there's a monitor between you two, you know, they're typing away, you're giving them your information. It's kind of a weird interaction. You know, they're, they're kind of protected by that monitor. And you know, as humans, we want to have that eye-to-eye -eye interaction. And you, know, you might peek around the monitor and have this you know, odd experience. So, so um, when we brought out DEX, yeah, and we, we spoke about it uh, last year, we, had this con you know, we have this ability to show uh, on both panes of glass. Right? We can have an application on, on, on the device, and then we can have an application on the monitor. Um, so this, this isn't, you know, this to, it was viewed on as like a companion device, but we, we kind of want to shift that mentality as potentially maybe using it as an accessory, right? So you drive as, as a, you know, as a sales representative, you might want to drive the content and push that content to the phone. Maybe do a signature or a POS application or vice versa. Maybe you're driving content from the phone and putting it on a larger format display. So you, you know, you're sitting beside your, your customer now or your client versus you know, having that, that physical piece of technology uh, between you, okay? So, so again, it's, it's talking about how can we change how we engage, you know? We, we wanna, obviously, you know, it's not just about giving uh, you know, a, a Samsung device or a, you know, a Samsung phone and you know, we're mobile, right? You know, it, there, it's more to that, okay? So some of the challenges we, we came across when we, we looked at trying to transform or, or mobilize is, you know, you know, finance has a lot of proprietary applications, right? It's great uh, for small organizations that maybe use Office 365. Going from a, you know, your traditional desktop experience to a mobile experience is, is, is easy, it's seamless. You get to use Samsung DeX, it has the, the custom look, and, or the, the, the familiar look and feel, where you can resize windows, 
Uh, you can maximize and minimize. You have that desktop experience. You have multiple windows you can do. Um, when we talk about proprietary applications, uh, that you know you, don't, you can't just do a rip and replace. You might have 10 or 15 or even more uh, applications that you have to think about, and you may not be able to mobilize those. So how do you deal with that? So that's where you may want to take a, a virtual desktop or VDI approach, where you still have access to all of your legacy applications, but you can be mobile. And with Samsung DeX, it, it looks like that, that experience as if they were sitting at a Windows PC or a Linux PC, uh, connecting remotely. So, they, so that, that allows you, or allows you as an organization to continue to use your applications. So you're, there's no learning curve for the, the, the end user. They can continue on, and, and that they now, they, when they undock, they have all of those tools, even though they're in the legacy format, they have them mobile. And, and that gives you time where you can now pick and choose what applications you want to mobile, mobilefy. So you know, it's not a rip and replace, it's, not, it, it's a gradual transition that you can kind of take with that. Yeah, Matt, I think that's a really good point. It's, think about it as a controlled transformation right. and not a rip and replace. Do the things that implement DEX, laptop, but in a way where you fill that gap, focus on your mobile first strategy, build those mobile first apps, but then slowly but surely migrate those legacy applications over to the mobile platform. Exactly. Exactly. So one of the other challenges uh, we kind of come across is now, you know, we're, we're potentially, um, you know, we're giving a, you know, we're looking at potentially using the device as a, a physical, phys like as a tool that we would maybe hand to uh, a, a customer that's not a part of our organization. So we have to look to protect that data, right? So up until this point, you can do everything uh, with th that isn't platform specific. It's it's all Android, Android multi multi window framework and Android techniques. Um, but when you're giving the device to somebody else, you have to maybe you know, look at securing that. So you can use our, like our platform-specific APIs. So you can use kiosking techniques. So you can hand that phone or that tablet to a customer, let them use that experience. And now you can say, why don't we take you know, the, the, the phone or tablet and continue on back in the office? And it's, you, you, you can seamlessly dock and continue on and, and carry on to where you were. So, so now you have your knowledge workers that are in the customer space, they're, they're you know, interacting, they have their tools, and then they can kind of come back and bring that. that that's kind of the idea that, that we're, you know, we're trying to bring and, and how, how we can change that, that interaction with the customer, okay? So here we're gonna start some uh, demonstrations. Uh, so we're gonna show uh, how you can change that, and, and the goal is the first part of the demonstration is gonna be how do you do that with uh, Android, just, just uh, non-Samsung uh, specific, platform specific code, but then how you can change your experience with the customer. And then we'll go into some more platform specific customizations. Uh, so, so we're gonna go and sh we'll show a bit of code, but the idea is to get you thinking about the use case, okay? So when you're, when you're, when you're gonna view this, the format we're gonna use is we're gonna try and put the phone up on the larger format display right there. So this is the, what the, you know, what's gonna show on the physical glass. And then the desktop experience is gonna be on the monitor. So this is what you would see as your, your traditional monitor. So think of that as you know, that, that experience you're looking behind on the monitor, okay? Um, and just a disclaimer, we, these demos just worked in the speaker, speaker room there, so our goal is to get five out of the five. demos. Yeah, work, I think five And then we'll work. be happy if we get more than that. <laughs> we're, we're laughing, but. Yeah, that's anyway. right, that's right. Okay. Laugh with us. I know it's the last session of the day, but yeah. laugh with us, it's gonna be good. <laughs> okay. So. So we'll switch. <clears throat> I think we're switched. I think we're good, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna do the bad app no touch. Okay. So, I don't know so, if you can see that. Yeah, so, so what, what Hanjin just did is he's, he's trying to launch an application and he's getting a, a, a toast. So this is if, you, if, you do, if you've developed an application um, that may be a game or maybe something that forces or requires touch, that isn't going to run on Samsung DeX, right? So there's a simple uh, update you can do to the Android manifest to allow that to run, okay? So, so use the second bad app. Okay, yeah. so this is, um, if you don't do any, any code, this is what your Android app is gonna look like, okay? So, so you can see that uh, some of the, uh, the maximize and minimize controls are grayed out, uh, and you can only orientate, you can't change the, the, the size of the window. So here, so let me try to resize. I can't resize this, I can't maximize it. 
So the only thing I can really do is put it into the background, right? So if I try to put it in the background, yep, so it goes in the background, still there, right? But it's really not optimized, right? not really do much. And then if you put in any content, and then you change Oops. the orientation. <laughs> Matt Hills. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it is awesome. All right. And so we, we can just change the orientation of the device, or we can switch uh, if we want to just switch to the Elmo for a sec. Yep. So let's do that. Oops. OK. OK, so here you go. So, so now we can, we can try and bring that from Samsung DeX onto the phone, which we can. But you'll notice, Ugh. OK, our application here isn't, it's, it needs to be restarted, OK? There you go. So we're, we're changing from a, a larger format display, and we're going to a smaller screen size. So, so we, as a, so Samsung's uh, trying to make that experience for applications that are optimized um, be as efficient as possible. So we want to help the, the developer, if they haven't optimized, redraw that screen. Okay, so they're going to get that kind of message. So do well, we can fix this. You can fix it, absolutely. And, and we'll show you an example of how you do it within the code sample. Okay. So, but you can still restart, but here's the issue. Right. So I just put in, Bad Hills is awesome, but when it restarts, it has to go through the Android application lifecycle, goes through on create, and then it goes back into the default, which is the state that it would have started when it was started up brand new, right? So we'll fix that. So we'll be able to show you how to create and save the state, and we'll walk through, walk through an example of that, okay? okay? So let's go back to the slides. Okay. So here we go. So. So this is the Android manifest that allows you to implement a resizable activity. So what, what that really is doing, all that's, all that's really doing is telling the using the application to tell the OS that I would like to be resized and I would like to be put into the Android multi-window mode. So if you're familiar with running multiple applications on a plate of glass within Android, this allows you to do that, right? Switch. Yeah, do you want me to? Yeah. Let me switch it over. OK, so let's go to the next demo. OK. Oh, we had to start the SDC app. OK. All right. OK, so this is our, our so now we're going to show an application that's, that's kind of leveraging the uh, multi window framework. So those are, with the XML changes, we can see. You know, we have our desktop controls that are, that are, are going to be familiar to a user. We can maximize and minimize. You know, we can resize. You've got a responsive UI. And then it'll even go to mobile mode automatically. And it's saved. That, that state is saved, right? So we can do that without any, like, I mean, there's, there's different approaches you can take with that. You can use uh, and observe the Android lifecycle to manage that. Yeah. Or you can use some, some just XML tags in your manifest. Okay, so there's different approaches you can take. Some are, are less work than others, right? So optimization really doesn't require code, per se. Right. It requires configuration within the Android manifest. And the beauty behind putting it into the Android manifest means that you get to support not only Samsung devices, right, but all the Android platform without, so putting these meta tags in there does not implement any of your other uh, deployments that you might have within your environment. But we feel that you get an extra benefit out of this because you're now providing a better experience for, let's say, your employees to be able to use both mobile and desktop. Perfect. Oh, and let me show you that next piece here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, one of the best practices, okay, so this probably won't be too, uh, too much of an issue for enterprise developers uh, because usually games will put this particular uh, configuration in there. But what you want to do is you want to avoid forcing your application to only support touch. Uh, so basically we struck that out. It said, please don't use this in there. Um, if, you put, if you end up putting that in there, you'll get a warning message from, from the platform that indicates that um, you have forced the first touch, and we want you to uh, remove that purely because uh, you, you need, for DEX, you need to support the, the mouse and the keyboard. Right. Okay, perfect. Next screen. Okay. 
Okay, so handling runtime changes. This is a, this is a very in-depth topic. Um, so if you wanna talk to me afterwards, but really what the rundown here is that uh, with any, any Android application, uh, you need to handle runtime changes. Uh, so orientation changes is the main thing with, with Android um, because it needs to redraw this screen. Um, you, selecting the right resources from, from your, your project, right? And to give you the best look, depending on the, the orientation. Um, with our runtime changes here within uh, Samsung DeX is that now you're looking at larger screen formats. So any, any large screen format, so whether it's a projector, whether it's a monitor, will have resolution that will be uh, sent over to the Android OS and we will uh, take care of that for you using the platform. Uh, the, the one key thing here is that if you're looking to save heavyweight objects that cannot be serialized, then we have a, a, met, a meta tag in there for you as a developer to handle those runtime changes. So it makes it, your project a little bit harder to implement, but it's runtime changes, right? So think about that. If, you, if they can be serialized and they're lightweight objects, so in that previous example where we put Matt, is, Matt Hills is awesome, right? Though that, that text can be serialized, and then when it, when it goes out from on pause state and then goes into on create, it will uh, save instant state, which is a uh, Android bundle that you'll get uh, as part of OnCreate, we'll send that back to your application so that you can repost the information there. Okay? All right, so yeah. next slide. Okay, yes. so we got, we got to do a demo. Okay, so this is the uh, undocking and docking. So this is where uh, Hanjin was just uh, talking about where um, for, for, with a simple XML tags, we can transition from one pane of glass to the next. And we, you know, with that bad app before, we saw that, that nasty message that um, you're gonna have to restart the application. We can avoid that um, by using those meta tags and the experience uh, where we bring that over the phone. We're just, uh, so we've got the application on Dex just to show you. We're gonna go over to the uh, phone here. Uh, where's the Elmo? Yes. Okay. Oh, there's the Elmo. All right, so we're gonna bring that app, this, the demo app over. Wherever it is. Too many apps. I think it was this one. Just go to home. Oh. There you go. There. Okay, sorry. So, so this, again, we, don't, we didn't get that, me that message. Our, sa our content is saved. Um, and there's no Java code doing that. That was just using the meta tags. Um, we could handle that with Java code, um, but we didn't need to do that. that that's where... Uh, with a simple XML tag that isn't specific to anything in, in Java code, where, where uh, that will work across other platforms, right? So it's not just specific to Samsung on that, okay? All right, and the next demo. Well, we oh. gotta switch over yep. to the, there you go. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, so we're, we're back in Dex. In fact, in fact, can you start the SDC in Dex again? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We bring it back. So there we go. So we didn't get that bad message that says, hey, we're gonna restart your application because we put that special meta tag in there uh, that allows you to uh, restart, not restart your application. So what happens is there's a process ID within Android that, that keeps alive. So it doesn't get uh, crushed by the OS. That's, that's the beauty behind that meta tag and how, and how easy it was to implement, to optimize it so that we can, we can show it without sort of restarting your process, which makes it really, really handy um, to get, get the, the instant save state. So, okay. So another thing we can do with Samsung DeX is uh, context menus, custom context menus on your, your application, where you just do a simple uh, right click. I think it's, yeah, there. there and then you, that's gonna be specific to what, you know, your activity or your fragment that you're doing you're gonna have a custom workflow or custom context menu with the, 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 the right, uh, a right click. Um, so that's where we can show there. Yeah, so think about the hamburger menu, right? The hamburger menu usually is your, your contextual switch or your contextual options. You can now pre-build that and make it run together yeah. using the, the mouse uh, right click. Next slide. And, that's just, and then yep. the code to implement that is next slide. Yep, so that was the old keep alive. And this okay. is just examples of that, okay? Yeah. So. And then another quick uh, demo, so we'll go back here. So we can also do the same kind of concept with the wheel mouse, where 
we're taking the, uh, the, a squirrel mouse or real mouse input, and we can also have an interaction. So we can have a custom interaction based on what we're doing with uh, the input of the, the squirrel mouse. Right. So this replaces the pinch and zoom. Right. Could, that right. could be that, or you could have a selection, auto selection can be done with that. There, there's, you can use different techniques, to, uh, or you can use different features to implement that. So implementing this code doesn't affect your application pinch and zoom when it's running on the phone, by the way. You see? So they, they work in conjunction with each other. So when the human input device gets plugged in, that's when Android knows that, okay, you're using a mouse and keyboard versus using just a plate of glass for pinch and zoom. Um, that, that takes care of the issue where if you had an application that, used, that leveraged a map, well, how do I zoom? Okay, zoom in, zoom out, that's what you'd use that for. So we, earlier on, we were talking about um, we want to change how we interact. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're using the phone not as a companion but as an accessory, OK? So we've got a, uh, a demo application that we, where we can leverage uh, both the, the, Sam, the Samsung Knox framework and uh, a custom, uh, or not a custom, sorry, an intent. Whoops, sorry. A, uh, an implicit intent that gets sent by deck. So, so what we're going to, what we're trying to do here is harness the, um, the use case of I'm, uh, I'm on the floor. I'm working with, uh, you know, a customer. I want to bring them back into my office, or I want to do a sales transaction with them. We can, we can leverage uh, this, this custom utility here. So, think of the seamless transition yeah. that that you would need. So, being behind a desk, picking up your device, going mobile, assess right. And then, need, then you need to come back because you now need a keyboard and mouse, and then putting the device back into docking mode. Right. So uh, say I'm on the floor. I'm doing my, you know, what I'm doing with the customer. I want to go now have that custom experience. I'm going to dock into my workstation. OK. And we're going to wait for Dex to be. So once Dex is detected, or once Dex starts, so this is thinking about dropping into a custom, custom cradle, potentially, right? Maybe we'll switch it over. Yeah. OK, so we see, uh, just before oh, you switch over, oh, back yeah, for sorry. a sec. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So we see automatically our, there you go. our application is started, right? So we've got without any interaction. And then we've also put this in a kiosk. So we can't, you know, we can't do anything. Uh, the, you know, if we've given this to the end user, they're locked into that state, right? So we've got the application on the phone. And I'm going to uh, use on, we'll just bring that up. Yeah, I can do that. OK. OK. Whoops. Okay. Actually, let me leave it on the, the Elmo. Perfect. OK. So we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, go ahead. We so I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm now, I brought the customer to the sales desk. And now I'm going to have an interaction. So I'm using an application in Dex here. And I'm now, whoops, sorry, wrong window. So I, I have my, my, my Android application that's optimized for DeX. Okay. And now I'm pushing content, right? So I'm, I'm you know, maybe entering in data. And you know, I'm pushing that data live from one application to another securely. Okay. So that's, that's another option that we can potentially leverage. And then when I'm done with the transaction, you know, I can just dock. And then we see DeX is detected. I now can use my phone again, and go back to what I was doing. So you can have those purpose-built experiences, uh, both with uh, the Samsung DeX APIs and the Samsung Knox APIs. Okay, so yeah, so what we're showing you is basically a retail point of sale system, something similar to that, right? Where you're giving positive feedback back to the user yeah. to, to bring in that personalization, that interaction. You can even uh, make it so that you can go back and forth and, and uh, uh, really get into sort of using the device, sending feedback to the, the person behind the desk, and the person behind the desk sending feedback back, back to the individual. And we'll get into that in just a bit. Oh, can we uh, actually show them the detecting desktop code, actually? Yep. Okay, demo. Oops, this one. Yeah, okay, perfect. So. All right, so how do we do that? So the, like, like Matt said, it's essentially just the Android intent. Um, sorry, broadcast message um, that allowed you to do intent filter 
uh, to know whether whether the device is in uh, dex mode. So so you'll need this. Like you'll you'll need to understand uh, to build that seamless transition. You'll need to know when uh, these events occur to make the the right action. So uh, depending on when the dex desktop gets enabled, uh, you can launch you know secondary applications uh, afterwards uh, based on that. So really simple, easy, intent filters, pr pretty standard stuff in Android. Okay, so here uh, we're just switching. So now we're gonna have the DEX screen or the desktop experience screen here, and then we're just gonna show you on the Elmo uh, what we're doing on the phone. So here is, uh, you know, again, this is changing our interaction, yeah. you know, pushing content around that. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we've got this, again, it's, it's uh, you know, we, we're, we're trying to change this uh, going back into the office, um, you know, and now I'm sitting and maybe I have the phone around me and I wanna push content to the large format display. So you can, you can send or trigger an application to uh, just uh, do that again. Oh, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> See, four, four out of five. <laughs> okay, there you go. There. So I can, I, now I can have the phone around me and I can push customized content to a large format display. So, I, I can be, you know, I can now have this interaction where the customer's here and I'm pushing content is, is kind of the, what we're trying to do there. Or you can change the format where you would put, you can also push content from the monitor to the phone. So it can go either way. So it just shifts how you, your, your experience and it shifts how you, you interact. Okay. Do we need to push to the phone? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Or do you, okay, I think I just select this, right? Yeah. So yeah, if you just again, I guess the uh, Samsung browser isn't optimized yeah. for. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll talk to the Samsung yeah. Internet yeah. team. Actually, in fact, in fact, we were just getting ready earlier, and we're we're talking with them. It's like, yep, they're a bad app, but uh, it is actually on the roadmap to to get updated, which is really nice. Okay. So. So that's, that's, again, we're doing, the, like the major, again, the majority of those demos was with, with no Samsung proprietary um, framework, right? So we're, we're just doing that, sorry, it's uh, APIs. We're just doing that all with Android, the Android, uh, Android APIs available. So, so, so that's the key takeaway, right, when we're, we're considering using Samsung DeX. So something we can do is, you know, we're, we're, um, now that we have, uh, you know, this is a companion device or as an accessory, we can look to manage these, these two, two devices separately, right? So we can do things like change the wallpaper, you know, and we can change the wallpaper both separately on the phone. Yeah. So we can have a different wallpaper experience on the phone and in Samsung DeX. Yep, so there it is. So we went from blue to gray, and yeah. which is really nice. So you can also change the timeout. So you can have a different timeout on your phone, and then you can have a different timeout on Samsung DeX. So it just gives you that ability to customize and you can have those two different experiences depending on, on where, um, where you want that experience to exist. Um, you could also use Samsung Desk as a, potentially as a kiosk uh, where you, have a, you, you can specify where shortcut icons get created. You can also create custom web icons, okay? And they can be driven to... So there they are right here? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And then you can reset those icons. So again, these are with uh, customization APIs, but it allows you to customize that experience, and you can you uh, to whatever you want to have done. So it allows you to customize that experience to your use case. Okay. So again, for on that that same vein where we're you're managing the two spaces separately, um, we can you can disable applications uh, that only work uh, in in mobile, and they they're disabled in Dex. So right now we we've got Chrome where we, so we'll just show Chrome, let's, okay. So we've got Google Chrome here while we're in Dex, working. So we can actually set that so it actually disables in, in Dex, okay. So now we'll go back. We're docking Dex. Now, now Google Chrome isn't there and it's not accessible, but as soon as I undock from Dex, Chrome shows up. As soon as I dock back into Dex, 
Chrome, Chrome's disabled. So you can, you can create your applications to work in one, one context or another, depending on, on the use case that you want to leverage. Think of application control workflow and how you want to build that, restrict the user interaction so that they, the user can't get lost, right? Make it, make it uh, multi-purpose, but give them sort of a, a defined set so that they uh, can complete their tasks without sort of getting distracted by uh, outside, out-of-the-box applications on the device. And, and one last uh, demo as further on that vein is um, we, we're showing our desktop experience and we're showing the phone as two separate pieces. But maybe you're, you've got a customer in front of your phone or tablet and you're in front of the monitor and you want to see what they're doing. You can disable Dex programmatically and which will switch into a mirroring mode. So you can see exactly what they're, they're potentially doing on the phone and then you can help them. And then you can go back into your Dex state and then have access to what is exposed in Samsung DeX. So you can do those things programmatically to customize to your use case if that's something you see fit. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So here's here's some of the code that that we, we went over. So lots lots of things here. So this is the customization of the desktop. Um, yeah, locking DeX. Right. Um, what else are you? Oh, setting the wallpaper. Yep. Right. So you can set the wallpaper independently. Yeah. Wallpaper, the phone, uh, the home screen, and the lock screen can be set independently, and of course, on the yep. phone, it can be the same way as well. So the majority of these samples, when you look at them, are very small bits of code that you put in there. It's not a huge architectural change that you would include in your application. So it makes it really simple and easy when you already have your Android application. Okay. <clears throat> so. This is a little bit more, more challenging on, on, on this one only because uh, we, we wanted to basically uh, create you know, shortcuts on the desktop. But what you're seeing here is that you're using the custom device manager. And the custom device manager is, this, is the customization APIs, um, our Knox customization APIs that, that we leverage to add that personalization over into your application. So think of the solutions that you can do, um, different ways, be able to you know, recreate environments like gold images. Uh, be able to, um, you know, set, set the device back over to uh, the default, which which you saw when you had icons uh, on there. The user can modify it in their their heart's content, and then all of a sudden, just wipe it back. Um, think of like a like a support sort of uh, uh, system there. Okay. This is the state. So if you want to create, this is the the kiosk for for the desktop. And this is the, the way that uh, you're able to what? Um, disable, yeah, disable we're disabling Chrome, Chrome, Chrome program, programmatically, where we, it, it only exists uh, in, uh, while you're uh, docked, or sorry, undocked in DEX. So if you wanted to you know, make a DEX only, uh, or sorry, if you want to make a mobile only application, this is where you can disable it on your, when you're in DEX. And it doesn't have to be just only one, a single application. Correct. It can be multiple, yeah, applications, multiple applications on there. All it, right. Makes it really on easy. Chrome. Again, this is just customizing the, we're managing the, the devices separately. You know, we've got, uh, again, we're, we're, we're changing the timer just for the DeX experience and not for the, the, ta the phone or tablet, if we wanted to customize that. Right, still pretty simple, like all fits on one slide. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is again, if, if we wanted to uh, change, uh, we showed the screen mirroring. If we didn't want um, DeX to start automatically, we can change that experience or we can force it to start automatically based on on our use case and what we want to show with, with uh, the customer. Okay. Here's just additional. Yeah, correct. Sort of foreground, background, how to bring All it right. in. All right, so let's. Um, One last slide. Let's, oh yeah, can, can we bring up the. Yeah. This, okay. Did you, did you notice that we use both a monitor and then the, the big screen over here? Do you notice anything like different about that? Can you un can, uh, let's see if we can undock. Can you undock and then show them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is just a Mac, Mac OS. Yeah. yeah. And we're using uh, our new Dex yeah. on PC. So you show that it takes a little bit. So there's there's some setup that we have to do to recognize that the Samsung device was plugged in. And yep. So we just got the the toast message up there. So here's Dex on PC. So we, so you can use Dex with a, with a, just a plain old monitor, 
And then from a workflow perspective, from an employee productivity perspective, we can now give you decks within the environment here uh, from, a, from your laptop, okay? So, so think about uh, if you had a developers who are developing the Android application, what you can do is you can simultaneously open up Android Studio, build, and see how that immediately uh, uh, behaves within Samsung DeX. You can operate all of your Android applications running from the phone. So this is, this is a Note 10 or higher, okay? Um, and then in the future, there'll be uh, plans for supporting uh, some older devices that are gonna be on Android 10. 10. Yes. So this is a really neat new sort of DEX improvement that we have uh, that really showcases like what we can do um, and pushing the envelope and, and really innovating because now we're, we're helping you bridge to get your employees to make that jump over to Samsung DeX, um, but then also uh, supporting external monitors. So think of solutions that you might be able to do uh, similar to the, the retail bank uh, scenario there, um, kiosks, uh, point of sale systems, that sort of thing. Uh, and really, so you don't have to do that extra uh, R&D for getting different uh, hardware pieces. You can run that all from, from a single device. Perfect. Okay, and then one more, oh, sorry, we gotta switch over to one slide here. Okay, and one more thing. Okay, so events and resources. So if you wanna learn more about uh, and, and really get your hands dirty and implement, uh, we have uh, upcoming events, we have, we have hackathons up there. Developer.samsung.com is a really good resource. Um, all, the, all the code that you had uh, it, it, uh, for Samsung DeX uh, from a sample perspective, uh, if you visited our code lab, the DeX code lab earlier, there is a sample project out there that, that will get you uh, quick started on, on to how to optimize your application immediately. Uh, so we have the code posted up there on the, on the developer site there. Uh, Samsungnox.com, that's uh, where you would go to, the, to get the um, customization APIs that you could include into your project. Um, and then if you wanted to look at anything from a Tizen perspective, uh, we're doing uh, up upcoming hackathons to uh, get you excited for wearables, okay? And then finally, I know we're a little, just a little over time here. Um, if you can, please rate the session. Um, just like Uber, we would love five stars. But uh, thanks for attending. Yeah. Thanks, guys.